Paradise Island, it's game three of Big Blue Bahamas as the University of Kentucky men's basketball program and Big Blue Nation have taken over the Atlantis Resort. Tonight, the Wildcats face Mega B-Max from Serbia inside Atlantis Imperial Arena. Ready for game number three of the tour. After an off day and a day at the beach, we welcome you courtside. Sunny, Sandy, and Salty with you, Tom, Dan, and Seth. You would be the salty one for now. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. That's us. I'm hanging out with you two jokers. I can understand. Uh, expectations always high for this Kentucky team, both as a whole and individually. And the expectations now for freshman Tyler Hero are suddenly through the roof. He's played very well. Yeah, Tyler Hero's been terrific. And it's not just that he's averaging 19 points a game. Tyler Hero's been terrific because how he scored those 19 points a game. He showed his ability to shoot it from the three, four from eight. He can beat you off the bounce and create separation. He's been terrific without the basketball, waiting on screens. He's a complete offensive player. He's made four threes, eight for eight from the free throw line, and he is a fearless attacking offensive player. And Nick Richards has taken advantage of opportunities to get to the bucket here in the first two games. Well, he's 11 for 13, and more importantly than all of statistically, he's done great. But more importantly than that is he plays with his head up and he plays with a confidence. Got a nice jump hook, has hit jump shots on the baseline. I've been around him doing the fantasy camp. He's, a, he's our manager, and what a fun kid. He's just a great, great kid, and he is a completely different player than he was last year. I expect him to be the, one of the most improved players in all of college basketball. The team in the hot pink, Mega B-Max from Serbia, a couple of NBA prospects, great youth and length. We'll talk a little bit more about them, but first and foremost, Kentucky and Richards with a touch early. Once again, E.J. Montgomery and Jamal Baker not available for Kentucky tonight as they battle injuries. You can, you can see right now, this is really a physical team. They're not letting guys go anywhere. Great drive. Buddy Green had 10 in the game Thursday night with three assists. He is explosive. When people get up in it defensively and get physical with it, what do you got to do? You got to spread them out and then drive them and make them pay for the pressure on the ball. Buddy Green, really nice left-handed finish. Good help defense from Emmanuel Quickly, the freshman point guard. Woo and a nice finish from Keldon Johnson. Youth is served early for the Cats. Explosive, handles the ball, goes to the rim, hasn't shot the ball great. You're only 36%, but who cares? I mean, that's how that kid can play. Costa Mushini has the ball right now. He's a big time prospect, 6'5, can play a little bit everywhere. And a foul inside on Nick Richards. Who else should we watch from the Serbian team? You know, when you think about the Serbian team, you think about Goga, Vistadi, who's absolutely, some people say, a first round draft choice, even if he came out this year, late first round draft choice. For sure, next year, seven footer, seven foot wingspan, can step out and shoot the three, and really, really skilled underneath the basket. That's number 11 in the hot paint, guarded by Nick Richards a moment ago. Well, don't sleep on number seven. Luca Asherbic is the kind of guy that can make shots. He's bigger than he looks. Looks like a baby face kid, but he's going to get a shot right here if they find him. Kentucky has already knocked off a team from right here in the Bahamas. They beat a team from Argentina two nights ago. And that's going to be a challenge for Kentucky. The physicality of the front court of the Serbian team, they have a toughness about them. They've got big bodies, they'll wedge rebound. They will try to make this an extremely physical game. They're going to have to deal with the pressure and the physicality of the game. DJ Washington left it behind. Here's quickly. And he'll go to the free throw line after the foul from Adam McCorkle. All right, so a lot of talk about Kentucky's backcourt. Really, they've got three guys who can handle the ball at the point guard position with Quickly and Hagen's the two freshmen and Quade Green. Well, that's going to be the question that Kentucky fans, or that is the question that Kentucky fans have asked me when I've walked through, hey, well, who do you think the point guard's going to be? The answer is you don't know. This kid, Quickly, has looked really, really good, particularly here to start the basketball game. Hagen's is a game changer on the defensive end. And obviously, Quade Green can play both on and off the ball, but I don't know that it's going to be. Oh, there you go, Richards. I don't know it's going to be solved for a while, and it may never be established that it's only one guy. But that's okay, right? Absolutely. I mean, John Calipari's history, especially at Kentucky, those who start the season aren't necessarily the key players that finish the season as Mashidi splashes one down. But someone's got to emerge because you've got to figure out how you're going to play late games. A scorer's got to emerge late game. Who are you going to play through late game? 
and also who the ball is going to be, whose hands is going to have the ball at the end of the game. So I think that's something that'll be interesting. Vladimir well, Green is playing extreme confidence as he turns it over. Wins the timing award for the night. Here's Rashidi, 20 year old from Belgium. Played in the Nike Hoop Summit a couple years ago. And a big top bucket from Stefan Fundic. He's got four early. Fundic is bigger than everybody on the court. He's thicker. He's not as tall as uh, Nick Richards, but he is a load. I mean, an absolute load. I'm going to give you a name from way back when. Ed Neely from Kansas State. Just massive. Don't remember Kansas State wearing uniforms quite this color. Tie up, and there's some fighting from Kelvin Johnson. And another thing this, this freshman class brings to this Kentucky program. Well, I think this is going to be a challenge. This is the first time they're going to get they're going to get punched in the face with how they respond. This will be physical. The screens will be physical. They're going to have to. They can't melt on screens. They're going to have to be strong with the ball. They're going to have to compete offensively also because. This team is going to try to take them out of what they're trying to do offensively. It'll be year number 10 of the John Calipari era in Lexington. He's watching from the back row of the stands, observing his team. May or may not run some plays in and some thoughts, but otherwise Tony Barbie leading the way as the acting head coach for this game. Here's Bonnet Green. And quickly for three. This is a fun team to watch. That's a, such an improvement from Quade Green over the first game where they were making bad decisions in transition. If you want to know improvement, there it was. In and out on the three ball from Luka Oscheric. And now Green left open. Back to back triples for the Cats. Another good decision in transition. Mega B Max uses a timeout early to stop the clock. It's a six nothing. It's the big blue Bahamas 2018. And in transition, Kentucky's been terrific. You play two point guards, you can share the ball, attack in transition, make good decisions. Quad A Green, Emmanuel quickly, knocking down jumpers wide. Great spacing, two point guards on the floor. And Dan, wouldn't you agree the pace of the game and the decision making in transition? It, compared to the first game, absolutely at a different level. Not even close. And P.J. Washington's shot there. First game, he was dribbling off his foot. He was going too fast. And you know what? He took his time, went down the lane, which is going to be a strength of Kentucky. Him at the top of the key and just made a good decision. Seth, I think it's the – it's this is as real a game as we've seen, right? I mean, it, it, you know, the Serbians are a very good team. They're putting a lot of pressure on. And Kentucky's handled it with great pace. Got the free throw line, Gogo Batadze withdrew from the NBA draft at the last moment this past summer. He's probably a late first round prospect going into next year, and he got contact with P.J. Washington for the foul. You mentioned it earlier, Seth. Quindich got all over P.J. Washington, and what Washington did, sort of right by him, just attacked an extended foot and went and got fouled. I'm telling you, P.J. Washington, from the top of the key or just off the top of the key, is going to be a massive weapon. Sophomore from Dallas had a Finley prep, averaged 11 and 6 last year, over 30 starts for the Cats. 15 point game last time out here at the Bombs. And John Calipari wants him to be aggressive. He wants him to attack, but he also needs him to compete every single play. He's got this big body, he's in terrific shape. He wants him really engaged in the game where. He can impact, impact the game so many different ways. He can rebound it, he can pack up the bounce, he's shooting a little further out, he's extended his range, and he just doesn't, wants to make sure he doesn't take the words off. You, you know, what you're talking about reminds me a little bit of Kevin Knox last year. I felt like whenever Kevin Knox wanted to play, he could be the best player on the floor. You've got to have that motor to do it every time now. Tom, I felt like Kevin Knox got so much better at that as the season went on. I, I'm with you on that. I thought early he was kind of off and on. Man, I thought late he just went and played. It. What did he end up, ninth, in, ninth pick in the NBA draft? I think he's the steal of the draft. I know you, you and I talked about it before the draft. We both thought the same thing, steal of the draft. He could be this year's Jason Tatum. Absolutely. Took over the West Virginia game. That's had the lowest offensive output of the season. He lost to Kansas State. How about that? Johnson looking for his guy again. 
That's good defense, defense right there. That's big time right there. Hagen's all the way in. John Calipari watching from the back row here in the Imperial Arena. You He's got to love what he's seeing from the defensive effort center. Yes. You talk about guarding the ball, Dan. I mean, Kelvin Johnson guarding a live dribble is the hardest thing to do in basketball. Watch his ability. Well, there's the steal. But to stay in front of the basketball. And right there, same thing. Good active defense. And you know Reed Travers. He can flat out rebound the ball in the defense, man. He's got not good hands. He's got great hands. Nice feed from there Hero. Go. That's an improvement, too, by Travis. First game, he didn't put himself in a position where he got fouled there. He took his time, showed the ball, stayed low. Look, when you're a big guy, you have the advantage when you catch the basketball right here. There is no hurry. You take your time and let all these guys hit you in the head. <laughs> Fundich is just chopping me. I'll tell you what, how about Tyler here or no? Susan, get to the rim and read. It's it's Fundich, he's got to get out of the game. You want him out? He's lost his mind. He gonna get somebody hurt just because he, he's waving at things that aren't there. He's got seven fouls now. He's gonna use every one of them, and it's gonna he, he he's going to either incite something or he's gonna foul out in the first half if they keep him in. Tony Barbie talking with the squad. Uh, the thing that the thing that impresses me most right now and. and I don't get too high or too low. I mean, the first game, they couldn't make a shot. Uh, they were taken out of offense at some times. But this team showed improvement. That's what John wants to see from them. Don't forget, every weekday on the SEC Network, it's the Paul Feinbaum Show. Weekdays at 3 o'clock Eastern, always available and streaming live on the ESPN app. The feed deep to Travis and one coming. It was your boy Fundic with the foul. He's got 17 fouls here in the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah, this was a great set and a great read. You mentioned Tyler Hero on the inbounds. Guys cut to the corner, guy cut to the top, and spread the defense. And look at his pass. That is an awesome pass. Great position by Reed Travis. He's going to finish an and one. And my guy Fundic needs to get out of the game. Travis with the three-point play. He can make a living at the free throw line. That's what he did for Stanford on his way to two-time all-conference performances each of the last two years for Jared Haas. And that was a scouting report bucket because they talked about them denying the pass up to the top and they'll shoot around today and talked about sealing the, the five right on the block. Great job by Travis right there. Contested threes off the mark. Stonich with the board. There's some wide bodies on this Serbian team. Well, we're a hardy Stonich. people, we're a strong people, and we're a handsome people. I think but this is the point where you explain that uh, that's your home country back in the day. My home country, United States, but my grandfather came over, so. How are you in the language department? Uh, I know swear words. I do. <laughs> I know the most vile swear words. <laughs> it does not surprise me. There's one another bit. foul out front. They just decided not to call. Good for Reed Travis going right at him. Radislav Ratkovic with the ball now. This is an established European basketball program out of Serbia. They had a lot of draft picks over the last few years. Nine picks in the last five NBA drafts. It's more than UCLA, Syracuse, and Kansas. Serbian basketball is sensational. Absolutely sensational. They play it. It's a it's a passion. They have academies where you're, you're targeted at a young age to go work. You know, you go to school, but you play basketball 10 hours a day. I mean, it's no joke. And if you can come out of Serbia and be on a national team, you can play, really play. Dion Milovic is their head coach. Mishko Raznadovic is a general manager and owner, and he's very influential in the international sphere. Maybe the most international, uh, powerful international general manager, agent type, team owner in all of the basketball because of the number of players they put in the NBA. Including Nikola Djokic with the Nuggets, signed a monster deal. The only thing I like about Travis so far today, when he's got an opportunity to score, he's gone quick. Yes. He's not playing yes. with the ball. It's boom. Catch it, read, and go. Uh, 
earlier in the week. He was putting on the floor. He was he was trying to work to the middle some, but he was he, the ball was getting stuck. Catch it. If you get an angle, bam, go. He shot the jump hook. He caught it in traffic and closed off and got to the line. Those are really good plays for a guy that, again, he's a freshman on this team. This is a whole, totally new experience for him. New school, new coaching staff, new system, and playing with a very young basketball team. Just looks more comfortable, as you said. Just looks way more comfortable. Got great position. He's got man hands now. He's gonna catch it. You throw it. He's he, he's got he's got nets for hands. Lines from the head coach is Marie Travis gets relief. Another free throw coming from Emmanuel quickly. Played for John Calipari over in Egypt, the under-19 team a couple of years ago. Now you're watching this full court pressure. This is the thing about when you have guards like Kentucky has, and you have a number of them. You can go and extend the defense, put pressure on the ball, just push people out maybe a step further and make it harder for them to get an offense. What do you think John Calipari is thinking right now? He's thinking we look pretty good defensively. We haven't done one thing all summer at all defensively. They've worked on what they're trying to get done offensively, their spacing, their skill work. They haven't done a closeout. They haven't done shell. They've covered some ball screen situations, that's it. So I would think he feels pretty good about what his kids have done. You think they have the personnel to extend 94 feet during the season? Because it could probably be a nine, at most, 10-man rotation during I regular think, season. I think absolutely. I, I think not only do they have the personnel, but they have the want to. Like, you watch Hagens out here, and that's what he wants to do. You watch quickly out here, that's what he wants to do. <clears throat> you know, there aren't teams that have more willing defenders. Or there's not going to be many teams that have more willing defenders than the three perimeter guys. Nick Richards, watch. If you zero in on Nick Richards, then the ball gets shot on, uh, on this free throw. He does not accept the block out on the free throw. You can really zero in on him. Like Last possession, he, nice job of spinning off. He got an offensive rebound earlier uh, by fighting the block out. Let's see what he does. He'll either try to cross and get in front of 15 on the other side, or he'll try to spin off on the block out. <laughs> and he does come. Thank you very much. Man. You knew that was coming, that was right? Coming. He worked so hard. He did, and the off. first one he went crazy to get it. Adam Okoka with the dish, corner three. They're contesting every single shot. Hero, transition jumper. That guy can score, and they love him in Lex. It's a hard shot. That oh. shot on the baseline is a hard shot. Great decision in transition. Great job of Hero getting to an open spot. Unselfish basketball by the Cats. Cats have outscored the Serbians 14 to 1 over the last four minutes or so. It's a pretty good look here, Seth. Pretty good cross court look, and you're right, this is not easy. He made it like it's his job. I mean, he just lifted up and shot it in. I can be your hero, baby. <laughs> I almost <laughs> wish he missed it after hearing that. <laughs> uh, uh, we've given you. Over the course of three games, all the comparisons we possibly can. Jeff Shepard. Devin Dante Booker. DiVincenzo. Dante We're Dante. adding that one to it. Dante right. DiVincenzo. He's got a DiVincenzo, big body, can shoot it, kind of wired to score. Dante DiVincenzo. Monday, the SEC Now team will be back to talk about the latest football camp news around the conference as we get closer to the start of the season. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. But we're not that far away, really, from people just saying, hey, he's Tyler Hero. I mean, once they figure out and see more of it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. When you come here into the gym this past three days, mm -hmm. Tyler Hero, Quad A Green, uh, and we Travis, first three guys in the gym every single day. And he is working out. Maybe even staying late to shoot after the games. Beautiful bounce. Green finds Richards. And a foul and an injury inside on Adam Okoka. Took a guys, shot in the face. There are some guys that the ball just finds, or he finds the ball, however you want to say it. Hagens, the ball just finds him, or he finds the ball, however you want to say it. But, man, is he in a disruptive guy, Seth. I mean, he just, he 
Nice pick your pocket, pretty good pass. Good extra pass right there, too. Yeah. Yeah. This is my guy, Brad Calipari. He's one of my managers, oh, too. Great dude. Is he getting some shots up? I hope he does. I don't know what he's doing with his pants right now. It's odd. What, what's up with it? With the, why? I mean, all right. Anyway, to short me, shorts the, are back. The, the thing that's impressed me. You were just muttering. Yeah. I think that's impressed me most about Kentucky is just how unselfish they yeah. are. You know what's impressed me more than that, Seth? How coachable they are and how great they are at this camp that we're doing. These kids are all energy. These kids laugh. They're great kids. They're shooting arrows when, you know, 50-year-old guys hit threes in our fantasy camp here. They're just great guys. Fun to be around. Didn't you guys coach against each other today? And he had a guy that they had a lot of arrows shot in my game. <laughs> a lot of arrows. One guy made five. <laughs> Career high against us. Goes on. We tried everything. We tried to trap. We tried to trap. <laughs> we made mincemeat of the trap. Thank goodness for J.R. Edmondson. Kentucky's fine is 55 years old. He drilled five threes. Great job right there. How about that? There's your guy, my guy, your guy, our guy, Hagens. I'll tell you what, great effort by Nick Richards. Not only stepping out and showing on that ball screen, but recovering back. Love it. Watch Richards get back in the game. Look at Hagens come from the weak side being alert. Tough shot falling away. An offensive rebound track down. Milos Kopovic. Hero battling inside. You say this group, a lot of platitudes you had for them moments ago, especially working the camp, but they just love the game. Is that yeah. too simple? No, that, that's that's it. They love playing. They kind of, I mean, I don't know if they love each other. He just traveled five times. <laughs> They are lost in the game. I think when you have good players, and you know it's going to be competitive, these guys understand they've got to be committed. Yeah. A lot it's of people good. say that Dockage needs to be committed. That one's off the mark. Man, it is a battle board. underneath there. I mean, it is an absolute battle. Hand fighting off. Got to get back in and rebound. The guards got to come back and rebound a little bit too. Yeah, that was a bad rebound by Nick Richards. Nick Richards just ran in there and jumped. He didn't read and react. Longest possession in the history of basketball for Serbia, and they'll get a trip to the free throw. You know, there's nothing worse. Well, there's things worse, but in a basketball sense, there's there's nothing worse than a big guy that just runs in and jumps. It's been a busy few oh. days here in the Bahamas, oh, and the a cats guy enjoying it. Jumps. Scuba the action. underwater camera. I'll show you some more of those fantastic pictures after this. Well, John Calipari proving once again that a work trip can also be fun here at the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island. The water slides are awesome, and the Rapid oh, River man. is the same. And so the Kentucky oh, players man. getting a taste of it. Got to hold on tight. And it's not just all fun and games, but also very rewarding. Kentucky team a few days ago went to give out shoes and socks to some of the needy in the area and in the name of Samaritan's feet, washed the feet, presented them with the gear and made lasting connections here in the community. And a catamaran tour yesterday. Talked to Reed Travis about it. He said, man, we're out there forever. It was awesome. The water is beautiful. We had a chance to swim with the fishes. Back fishes in, or fish? Back in my day, <laughs> swimming with the fishes isn't a good thing. <laughs> is it fishes or fish? That's what I want to know. I mean, that's the question. Hey, you know the answer is it that? shrimps or shrimp? Because <laughs> that's a pretty good shrimps back there. <laughs> the possession continues. Andrea Marjanovic played on the under-18 FIBA champs last year. This team's no joke. I mean, this team is being dominated, but I got to believe they're at some point going to make a run here. Talking about the Serbians. I mean, they're no joke at all. They shoot it good. Well, excuse me. The fishes. The fishes. This BMAX team is well coached. Yeah. They have a toughness about them. They've been together. 
They've got guys that are going to play in the NBA, and that's a good move, a good quick move. Then come work out it to the middle. Just didn't come out clean. No, he popped it. He didn't shoot it. He didn't release it. But the ball didn't get stuck, you know? Right, it was, right. It was, it was good move getting it. Look at this defense. Kelvin Johnson. Holy cow. Johnson rips down the board. Johnson has been terrific defensively, and he's playing against a guy that, as you see, about 12 or 15 NBA scouts on the baseline, he's playing against a guy that is being evaluated, could have been potentially a second round draft choice in the NBA. I mean, that's what happens. I mean, you've got games in Atlantis, a quality team, obviously, uh, from Serbia and BC Mega BMAX, potential NBA players, and yet, these young Kentucky players are competing at a high level. You know, I like about you asked what John Calipari's thinking. I'll tell you one thing he's got to be thinking. His team of young guys, as you just said, hasn't backed down a lick. Like, literally, Serbia, in certain spots, particularly Funcic, has come out to hurt players, come out to just physically abuse guys. And what his young team has done, what Kentucky's young team has done, is go back at them harder, which is a heck of a deal, particularly Johnson. So I, I don't even know, there. I don't even, I, like, I don't think they're trying to hurt anyone. I think that the game, the international game, the game in Europe is very different than our game. It is I think a Funch much is trying to hurt more physical game. And you know what? The game's being officiated like it would be in college in America. This is just a different game for them in terms of how the game's officiated. The European game is much more physical, especially around the basket. SEC officiating crew on hand for the entirety of this tour. Your, your boy Funchich hasn't returned to the game. He's got eight fouls. <laughs> John Milovic is their head coach. Tell you one thing about us Serbians, we will speak with our hands. We will talk. If you pin our hands down, we can't talk. No, I, I, is that an you know option? What? Wait a second. Can we try it? <laughs> <laughs> telling you, when you see Serbians, man, see the hands go. <laughs> I think we should try that as an experiment. Yeah. Can we get half. some handcuffs out here? <laughs> Got some in the room. The pressure. <laughs> wow, Reed Travis knocks out a couple of free throws. Pressure and the length. Oh, good good pass. job right there. Good oh, don't overrun it. Good pass. That's hard to guard right there. That's, that's a great pass off the ball screen, throwing it high enough where only the post is going to go get it. I agree, but right in this play right here, watch what happens. You look at the P.J. Washington, as he comes off, he's got to put this guy right on his chest. Don't make a play on the ball. Put that roller right on your chest, stand him up and wall him up, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. He's got to get in the middle of the lane. No question. He's got to be there early. If you're late into help, you're going to foul or get a bucket and a three-point play. you got to be in help early. you got to be proactive, not reactive. Goga Bataji will be in the NBA draft next year with Drew the last moment this season, international players have until 10 days before the draft to withdraw. Good job of back dribbling and creating some space by quickly right there. Man, this is Travis working. Wow, bad pass. Terrible pass. Look at Travis. Same thing popped out of his hand. He's not releasing it. Good extra pass. That's a foul. Green off the glass. One of the things they love about Quade Green playing off the ball is that he is explosive when he gets it in bursts, but sometimes when he dominates the ball, he loses that explosiveness. You have a guy who can make a play on the second side, that's really good. So as that ball gets reversed and you're getting closeouts, now all of a sudden they got another guy who can get to the rim. Really good seal down right by P.J. Green on the run out, lob! Oh! Calvin Johnson jumped right off the island. Preseason favorites to win the national championship. And they look like they're rounding into form here in the Bahamas. Part I of the love number it. two recruiting class in the country. Well, this is a great look, but I love what P.J. Washington just did, not even letting them score. Pretty good outlet. And now Quad A Green times it, throws it. You can throw it anywhere you want because Kelton Johnson can go get it, man. Oh, this is a fun team to watch. Let me ask you, watching today, 
best in transition that I've seen for this group in terms of spacing, sharing the ball, Everything. making the right decision. Everything. How but much to me, the defensive play, these guys haven't been working on defense. P.J. Washington sealing down in front of the roll, being in a position to make a play. That's an instinctive, really good defensive play. What I like about it is, again, I'm going to go back to what P.J. Washington did after a foul was called. Serbian kid tried to lay it in. P.J. Washington went up through the basket, didn't let the ball go in, and that's more mentality. That gives you a little, little, little insight until what, into what Kentucky's mentality is in this game, and that's we're not going to be out tough. Delvin Johnson finds it. Both ways. Yeah, he had he had body wide open. Yeah, he look both ways. You can't look one side in transition. Gotta know where both guys are. You're talking about Kentucky being relentless on both ends of the floor. It wasn't that long ago that if you called somebody a dog in basketball, it was a bad thing, meaning they're dogging. But these guys are dogs in the sense that they are relentless. They are. They're, they're, they're coming right at a physical team. And John Robick and told me this morning, John Robick said, look. We're going to have to be physical, and we're drilling it into our guys all day, and they responded ridiculously well. Adam Makoka for three. Shots haven't been falling for the Serbian team. They only have 12 points in the first 11 and a half minutes. They haven't been falling because they're uncomfortable. Wow. When you speed a team up like Kentucky has sped the Serbians up, shots got to go with Oh, man. On the end line, it belonged Kentucky. was P.J. Washington with the pin. Guardia pressure. You try to pick people uncomfortable, get people to play faster than their, their, their abilities, yeah. and that's exactly what Kentucky's been able to do. They pushed them out. They've sped them up. Their length has been impacted the game, and they've also done a good job of protecting them. He blocked that shot with his elbow. Well, those of us with that type of ability, it's not that odd. The best defender is glued to Hero, right side of your screen. Quade Green. For you young kids out there, two dribbles got him in the lane. The third dribble got his defense off him and strong. Always stay low, get in the lane, get low, and use an extra dribble, and I swear to you, you'll make shots. These young cats are good in transition. Keldon Johnson playing above and beyond the rim to rip the decision by Quade Green. And you know what? These Stingrays have nothing over these young cats because these guys are relentless, a little sneaky, and a little eerie to compete against. Just the exhibition games that his real team is playing, but this week also coincides with the John Calipari fantasy experience benefiting the foundation and coaches like Seth Greenberg and Dan oh, Dockett. This is where we're going here now. This is where other. we're going here. Who was the home Shoot. team today? Look you, up there. Oh, it was Dan Dockett. Wow. You had to ask the name of the camp to set me up and, and, and expose me on that one, huh? Uh, look at Brian Hart, Chris Redmond, former quarterback at Louisville. Yeah, Super Bowl He was champ. drafted Super ahead Bill. of Tom Brady's on my team. J.R. Edmondson, Adam Givens, Kent Brakebilt, Mario Candela on the Colombian National Rugby Team. And of course, the great Zeus, Zeus Hernandez, my guys. I buy him beer after the game. They Friday, love him. Friday Green. Well, I mean, it's only fair to even it out after what he did to you on the golf course the other day. Doctor. Yeah, well, yeah, you're right. right, I'll right. Just I'm just let him go. I'm currently three and one against Greenberg. Two and zero coaching. There you go, and one. Yeah, yeah. You know what's really you know, great you about know, this you know week? What's here right now is a lot of static. <laughs> I'm static. No, seriously, what's great about this week, I was talking with the guys from Kentucky Sports Radio, and there's, there's two very different types of fans here, right? They're the fans that are play, paying for the fantasy experience. They have a ton of money to chase their dreams and get out there on the court and compete and pretend like they're still 20 years old. And then there are the fans that have been saving for four years to come here based on the last experience to get access to the players and program like you can't get anywhere else, yeah. that do it for their love, of Kentucky basketball. It's just, it's amazing, this Tom, fan base. Tom, I love this fan base, and I'm going to tell you why. 
Walked outside 3.30 today after our game, and guys were lined up. Mm -hmm. Girl, everybody lined up, 3.30. Oh, gates did not open until 6, and I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot to do here at the Atlantis. I, this fan base is awesome. You and I had the same conversation, I think, probably with the same people, because I turned to the teenagers who were in the front of the line. I said, you know there's a beach about 200 yards away. And the kid looks at me and goes, yeah, well, some things are more important than the beach. And I was like, man, I love it. I love every bit of it. I do, too. And the guys playing in the in the fantasy camp are awesome. I mean, just fantastic guys. Just everybody here with Kentucky has been as friendly and nice and fun. It helps when you're in paradise. They don't have to be nice to me, but they are, man. They're they're awesome to me, and so I'm, I'm all in. Another foul on my guy. You don't know have impressed with with Hero. Like, they're getting up into him to try to make it hard for him to catch the ball. And he's been patient. He hasn't chased anything. He's working hard to get open. He's been a willing passer. Almost used as a decoy, not on purpose, but they're so focused on making it hard for him to catch the ball that there are driving lanes and scoring opportunities for others. And he hasn't chased one shot. So let's forecast during the regular season when teams decide to dedicate their defense to Tyler Hero and shut him down, who individually benefits the most? Tom, I don't think they're going to do that. I, I, I just, I don't. I don't think that teams are going to say, okay, we've got to shut him down. He's averaging 19, but he'll probably get 10 or 12 in this game. I mean, he, that's probably, don't you think, set the most he'll have. He never averaged 22. There's too many other good players, too many post guys. So I don't think you can do that. I think you can guard him. But I don't think you're going to set your defense. To I stop think that him. you're going to guard him, though. You're going to play above him. You're going to force him yeah. to cut behind you. You're going to deny him, try to well, push him out right, one let, extra step. Let me ask you this. Kevin Knox. There's a lot of Kevin Knox in Tyler Hero. Run that baseline stuff for Tyler Hero. Yeah, circle action. Yeah. And run him off those bumps yeah. on the baseline. That was great stuff for Kevin Knox. He improved in it, learned how to do it. Reading those screens, the difference knocks a little bit bigger, although Hero yeah. can come off those screens curl. He does have really good elevation. Uh, look, he's got great range. He's, he can create separation. He works really hard at it. I, I, Let me I, ask I you this. Right. Who's going to have a better year? Year, all around year. Keldon Johnson or Tyler Hero? Depends, totally, two totally. I agree, but who's going to have a better year? But Tyler Hero's going to do that. He's going to make shots. Kelvin Johnson's going to defend on the floor, rebound, right. and do some other things. I got that's it. Who's going to have a better year? Let me, let, better me, year. let me refine that I question. I think each one of them has a role on his team that will help them be really, really good. I will it define would, it this way. I'm sorry, Tom. I will define it this way. At the end of the season, Kelvin Johnson will be first round draft choice. As a, not only that, but who's going to get more accolades? First team all conference, all this, you know, all that kind of stuff. Could be both. Could, could be, be both. both. Yeah, could be both. Well, they're both freshmen, so let me ask ask it this way. Which one would you predict would be more consistent over the course of the That's season? That's a good question. And again, we're looking at this thing in terms of analytics, points, and so Kelvin Johnson is going to be a lockdown defender who can rebound, get out in transition, who's going to bring a toughness. So therefore, right. and he'll bring that every single night. Now he, he might not get 15, but he's going to bring that. And that, 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 those are the intangibles that you need to really win at a high level. Tyler Hero is going to have some nights where he's going to put up big time numbers because of his shot making and his scoring. So, I know it, it's hard. To, you know, yeah, I'd but, rather not select. I'd, I'd rather talk about. You know what? These guys are sharing the ball. Guys are playing to their strengths. They're not showing people what they can do. Uh, they're competing at a high level. Well, to me, that's more important than any individual. Right I now. agree with. I mean, I agree with all that. That's all the coaching stuff. Stefan Fundich is talking to himself. Oh, he's muttering. It's a 19-point game. Mike Bray. I thought that was a good timeout right there. Uh, and uh, he's losing his mind next to me. Too much, too much dust on the dome today. It's <laughs> looking thick, though. <laughs> uh, oh, the beach has been awesome. Kentucky football starts its season September 1st against the Fighting Chippewas from Central Michigan on ESPNU. Then they'll go to Florida. We'll have that game. At SEC Prime, 7.30 Eastern from the Swamp as they look to end a 32-year losing streak 
for the Gators. Our guy Chris Doring broke their hearts. Oh, he was a walk on. Yeah, it's been a while now. Been a while. Florida you know what? Stuck I, one out last year. May I talk about? I'm, ne- oh, I'm going boy, back to when, I, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking about Kentucky fans. I'm going back to when I was in college 30 years ago. Kentucky was never any good in football. Indiana was never any good in football. Indiana would get like 15, 20,000 people in football. Kentucky, 58,000. Like, oh, yeah. these fans are the best, I'm telling you. They still get like 60,000, whatever it holds. They pack it. Good Here's pass. A- See right there. Oh. Pass perfect. That, that's the Tyler Hero effect because Hero came up that screen. They had to extend it. He's got to throw it and make that pass. They had to extend Uh-oh. it. And we got an altercation. Great job by the refs to get in there. Get in the middle of it. Goga Batadze, the NBA prospect, was a guy in the mix for the Serbian team. Two best NBA plays I've seen this weekend. Right there by Batadze. Watch, watch this play. Watch him dribble hand if they commit a second defender. And that's the Tyler Hero effect. And you're going to have to extend that dribble handoff. Now he's got to make the right play. And on the other end, we got a little shenanigans. And I like that a little bit. You know what? You don't have to push him out of the way, but you can protect you, you, your teammate. I, got, I have no problem with that. In a game, Dan, what would that be? That little push by Washington. Well, in the NBA or in the college basketball, it would be, one, right? we would not start playing for another 15 minutes. Yeah. Because we would have to go because all the referees want to make the NCAA tournament. So everything has to be reviewed 150 times. Reed Travis. Quick. That's a ah. good play. Know. Play. That's a big time rebound. Your teammate Dockage protected you like that. You probably still have your backpack. Thanks. Okay, I'm getting out of the Bahamas though on Monday because I have a passport. <laughs> Nothing else, but I do have a passport. Do you have your pride? Hero! All right, big picture for this Kentucky team. Here, I'll tell you, I'm not, let me get to a small picture for a second. Okay. They've got a comfortable lead. I want to see, A, how long they can maintain the intensity on both ends. How long can they continue to make good decisions in transition, getting it to half court, compete, and get the shot they want. Because sign of a young team is how long they can play hard. Good sweat. Quick. The veteran to the glass. Gogo Batazzi, who declared for the 2018 draft and withdrew late. He's a good player. He He looks like an NBA player. Young NBA player. He produced nine NBA picks in the last five drafts. He went went down like a soccer player. I think he twists his ankle. Really good finish right there. there. You see it? Oh, Ah. jeez. How about the Kentucky fans giving that kid a round of applause? You know what? Because they're basketball fans. Right. And, and they understand the game and they love the game. And What a great play right there, though, offensively. Good sharing the basketball, good finish by Washington. The number of good basketball plays these guys are making right now, very impressive. Absolutely. Both okay. ends. Richards with the swat. Here we go. Chance to run. Calvin really Johnson, great away speed. Right there, he, he hit it, but man, Hero didn't quit on the play, came over the top, almost got a piece. Did you see in that breakaway with Johnson how they were step for step yes. at midcourt and he just separated? Yes, had another gear that he's got to move. That was like your, your racehorse. I don't like that shot. Like That's that a settle shot. right there. That ball had to go bop, bop, and get to the other side of the floor. Let's see if my racehorse won. Air ball from us. Cherich. Kentucky out and running. Take it, Seth Greenberg. These young cats, when they get out in transition, most time, it's a high percentage shot on defense. They're active. They're alert. They get their hands in passing lanes, and they will eat you up. Kind of like Jaws Week here in the Bahamas. 
23-22, Kentucky out in front of the team from Serbia. Cats doing a lot of things well tonight. Yeah, look, look right here. You're talking about a little ball screen here with Reed Travis. He sees the defender step out early, so what does he do? He slips, collects himself, and finishes. That's a veteran, experienced player, but Kentucky playing with good enough spacing so the weak side defender can't rotate over. That's just good basketball, Dan. I mean, they've made really smart, good basketball plays. They've been unselfish. They've competed offensively, and they've shared the ball. He well agrees. said. He agrees. Hey, I, I do. Just, I want to say this. Exactly so, right. They're doing something really cool here at this arena here tonight. We're talking about the folks who maybe don't get a chance to sit courtside at Rupp that are on this trip for the experience and the access. They're raffling off tickets to three monster games this year: Auburn, Tennessee, and Louisville. Will folks here have a chance to win courtside seats at Rupp? Cal Perry's all fired up about something. <laughs> Is he having fun? But I think that speaks, though, to the idea that John Calipari knows how to take care of the program and the people that support it in all levels of it. Funchic fell on the floor, got it back. And Funchic has seven. So clean up the floor a little bit. Fouls or points? <laughs> yeah, yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> You know, Footage is like one of those guys that you hate to play with, but you, you really wouldn't mind him if he was on your team. Right. Play against. You don't want to play against him. You don't want to play like against him, but if he was on your sure. team. You know, the old motto, Gary, Indiana, we might lose the game, but we're going to win the fight. I like the pace they play. It's the decision when to attack, when not to attack, getting into some stuff in the half court, really been good. Tough shot, but that's a good play by P.J. Washington. Make himself available. Yeah, he is. Two minutes to go before the half. At the half, Seth Greenberg's going to sit down with this fantastic freshman class. We'll hear what they think, what their first impressions were coming to Lexington and putting on a big blue uniform. And who does the best John Calipari person? And Kenny Payne. Those would be two classics, I can tell you. When you sat down with those guys, who, who struck you as being the alpha male of the group if there was one? I'd say Keldon Johnson. He, he's the character of the group. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Emmanuel, nice pass. Wow. Extra dribble. Low, strong, into the lane, head up. I'm telling you, kids, if you want to play for the Cats, make a third dribble in the lane and stay low, and good things will happen. Up. The one thing about that play, Dan, the, the, the dribble handoff is an offensive play. Yes. It's not an exchange. No. And Connie Green came off that dribble handoff so hard that he could get downhill and get in the lane, which obviously opened up that scoring opportunity. These guys aren't exchanging. They're cutting hard, and they're cutting and coming off screens with a purpose. Watch P.J. Washington right with this down screen. Came off that. Came off that and created another shot. Travis gonna have to finish that. Kind of got in his own way around the rim. I'm for you. I'm for you. I'm talking about Indian, uh, international basketball rules, but they're not calling this at all like a college game. There'd be 722 fouls. If they called this like a college game. I would have that. No. Kelvin Johnson. I'll tell you, when he runs, he Ooh. gets out in transition. He can finish. He's an alert defender. He's a physical defender, a competitive defender, and he can help rebound. I mean, he can do a lot of things. And I saw him shoot early in the week. He does have the ability to make some shots. But right now, he's really playing to his strengths. Playing hard. And when you play hard, great things happen. Rashidi with his second triple coming to end the half. Quite a green with a late heave after the buzzer. Back to the Atlantis as we get set for the second half of action. A fantastic first half on both ends of the floor for Kentucky. They've put 47 points on the board, not halfway to hazard, but nearly halfway to 100. Tom Hart alongside Seth Greenberg and Dan Dockich. Uh, what did you like about the first half, Seth? You're talking about unselfish, fast-paced basketball, attacking in transition, making good decisions, assisting on 11 of their 15 field goals. They were terrific because they shared with the ball, they ran the floor, and they finished. 
Yeah, they did finish. I'll tell you what I liked. I, I thought that the Serbians came out to try to intimidate them physically, and not only did they not get intimidated, I think they just intimidated the Serbians. And Reed Travis, although didn't finish all, everything, I thought he played really well from a physical standpoint. And your guy, Keldon Johnson, man, he has played great. Hey, Seth, I thought Kentucky fans hated me, but some, a lady just slipped me a room. Stop. That was please, your stop. <laughs> stop. Stop, please. How about this? She put a room number on it, but... <laughs> How about that? Married man. Come on. It's I'm been a big blue I'm not party that one all right weekend. <laughs> What's your favorite favorite part of the resort? I haven't seen much of the resort <laughs> the last two days. But look, the, this place is phenomenal, really. I mean, it's a great family place. Uh, Dan probably be going down the slides at some point tomorrow. That'll be a sight for sore eyes. He'll be leaving a dust trail for sure. Sheedy hits his third. Pretty good set. Pretty good set out time. I just ran him off a little high screen. Got a good look. That's two in a row now. This is back down to 15. It feels like it's over 20, but it's not. Kentucky's going to have to play. What do you think the message was at the break for Kentucky? Maintain your intensity. How long can we play hard together in the right way? And that's the challenge. Don't you think when you yes. young dudes going into the locker room, you're up 19 or so, right? They think their game is over. And the deal is to play the next play like you played the last play. Seth, I always just tell teams, all right, if we're down 19, how are you going to come out? If we're the down, of course you're going to come out hard. And you got to understand that's what the Serbians are going to do here. It's a veteran group. They're not just going to lay down. They're being embarrassed. You got to foul again. You got to again. Oh, my God. Well, Fundich has someone to talk to now. He's talking with John Hampton instead of just talking to himself. I just was in the restroom at halftime. Here we go. Do, I, Dan, I, do we have, I, always no, have to hear the no, restroom we conversation? We do because I get my best information. Man, Kentucky fans were very proud of their team for handling the physicality of the Serbians, particularly Fundich. BC Mega BMAX, not just the Serbians, because this is a, an actual team that competes at a high level with some very talented young players. The guys from Austria, Germany, France. See, they're two point guards. You get a little pressure in the backcourt. What does Quadi Green do? He doesn't fight it. He pitches it and fills the lane. Just That's make. the benefit of playing with two guys that can make plays. And just guys that are going to make it easy. You don't have to make hard plays. Just make it easy. DJ Washington with the left. It's at least the second bucket. He's adjusted in the air. I know he, uh, he doesn't pass it like Draymond Green, but he's Draymond Green-esque in his, his kind of his little edge right now. And he's playmaking from the high post in terms of attacking the basket. His right hand and his left hand. on his hip, protected it. Oh, man, was that a nice move. Kept his chin on the rim, got it over the front. Too many passes inside. Check this out now. Kelvin Johnson, all right, coming off this, again, dribble handoff is an offensive play. Go shoulder to shoulder, get your inside shoulder down, attack. That is a big time play. And again, it's not an exchange. It's an offensive attacking play to dribble handle. You love the head on the rim. Chin on the rim. Not chin on the rim. Chin. Amateurs say head on eyes uh, on the rim. Uh, 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 and you're a cagey veteran. Chin. Big difference. Chin. chin on the rim as opposed to eyes on the rim. There's a big difference. That must be a Indiana. No. Nope. No, no. Oh, that's a damn dot. That's a T squared? Absolutely. It's, it's, so it's got to be correct. No question. It's been studied. Don't research. kick your head up. Chin on the rim. Man, when you just play hard, good things happen, and we shoot bow and arrows. Right now, Kentucky. Oh, the front match inside. Ooh. Man, how do you determine who that foul was on? Quite a green <laughs> was battling for his life. You know, they switched more in that possession than they switched the whole first half. And they switched that small on big roll, which I'm not sure they have to do that against these guys. Well, they did it early with Brad Calipari. Brad Calipari got caught on it. They didn't see it. Watch this. How do you determine who this foul is on? Like, all right, how do we determine here? 
They are calling it like a college game. You changed your mind? Well, I mean, that's, that's a right. ridiculous. Call. That's so a big time rebound so right it's there. College. Travis crashing the glass. Here's quickly a three. How good has quickly been? You could make the argument that starting this game, it was all about quickly and his pace as much as anybody else. You know, quickly is he's a, he doesn't make mistakes. He makes open shots. He defends actively. He makes good decisions. He's unselfish. Same play they started with. Pretty good action again, running off the top of the key. Rashidi, that's twice. He's been able to make a little move from the middle to the left, or excuse me, to the right this time, creating a little driving lane. Pretty good stuff. Whoa! <laughs> oh, man. If, if you don't like this, you don't like people or basketball. This is dunking over the, what'd you say? They got Austria dunking over Austria. They got Serbians dunking over Serbia. They dunked on us right there, P.J. Washington. That is a Sports Center top 10 book it. Top five, unless Tiger makes one from about 150. <laughs> Washington with the save. Quite a green, love, oh! Another poster, it was Washington first and then Johnson. Hey, is this any fun? I mean, is this any fun? Just watch what's going on around here. Throw it up, run the floor, and again, just ducking on everybody. That kid right there has been a catalyst as well as Emmanuel Quick. Just play hard, people. Good things will happen. <laughs> and we welcome you back to the Bahamas. 63-38 lead for Kentucky over Mega BMAX. This is an intense game tonight. It's a great game. It's a great game for Kentucky, even though they're blowing them out still. you got to remember, though, this is the third game in four days. These kids are also working the fantasy camp, and they're around all the time. Uh, they've had, had some practice time, but they better be good, because you know what's good? SEC's good. SEC is was fantastic good and last year. deep. They had eight teams in the tournament last year. They're adding terrific coaches and Kermit Davis and Tom Green. They're committed to facilities. I mean, SEC, they're not going anywhere. But these cats, they're going somewhere. Maybe to the Final Four, they play like this. Well, it was a banner year in the SEC last year, and it seems like this upcoming season could be just as good or even better. Tennessee and Auburn share the SEC crown, and Bruce Pearl's getting a lot of talent back on the Plains. And I mean, it's, it's going to be hard, I think. This Kentucky team will be picked to win the national championship, but they're going to get stiff competition for an SEC title from the likes of Tennessee and Auburn. And I think Alabama's going to be better than a lot of people expect. You got John Petty coming back, among others. And they just got a clip from Lewis, kid who's really, really a good point guard. Uh, don't, don't forget, don't sleep on Mississippi State now. Ben Howard has got not a good backcourt. He's got a terrific backcourt. Very young, talented group at Vanderbilt. This is a league that's going to get eight teams in the NCAA tournament. You've got world-class universities. You've got potential Hall of Fame coaches and a Hall of Fame coach. You've got commitments to programs, not just teams. Uh, and you've got the SEC Network, which gives them just another platform to play on. That makes them a little bit different. P.J. Washington, the block. Trying to go behind his back, got stuck on his hip. You, you mentioned Bandy. I want to touch on him for one second because Bryce Drew has brought in the most decorated recruiting class in the program's history. Simi Shitu will be there, uh, Aaron Nesmith, Darius Garland. Consensus five-star prospects. Nesmith is a four-star guy. Uh, there's a ton of ton of talent coming to Vanderbilt, talent returning at LSU with Tremont Waters and others. Yeah, you're talking about young, talented, deep freshman classes across the board. And when you look at these, these freshmen, these guys are the impact right away. Darius Garland, 6'5", point guard that can score it. Shitu can run, protect the rim, rebounds the basketball. Smart is extremely athletic. Nemhar, you got to look at him because Florida's going to need a point guard. Remember now, Chris Chios is gone. What happens? Nemhar, he's going to be handed the ball potentially as a freshman across the board in that league. 
You've got deep, talented freshman classes. Reggie Perry at, at Mississippi State, he's got a chance to be a really good player. 6'9", he can really run, shoots the ball. He's going to have to learn how to play hard all the time, but really talented. If, uh, if Tennessee is as good this coming season as they were last year, Rick Barnes could be one of five coaches to take his third school to the Sweet 16. Guys like Mike Anderson, Cliff Ellis, Mark Godfrey, and Bruce Pearl have done it in SEC play. And blocked by Washington. Oh, Dockich's boy is still on the floor. <laughs> Fun dip, Fundich. He's got 11. Let the pressure speed you up. Vision by Hero to find Washington for another jam. I don't want to have to sing again. Please don't. Man, Washington is really playing hard. You mentioned speeding up. Hero is not getting sped up. This is impressive. I mean, it, it, look, let's be honest. I, I don't think we expected a 26 if he makes these two free throws point lead. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, this team's the greatest that they're playing, but they're veteran guys. They've got NBA guys. You've got a ton of NBA scouts here to see them, just like you would a big-time college atmosphere. And they've just taken the heart out of B-Max. Wade Green to the free throw line. Sophomore from Newman Gretti outside of Philly. I, I, Power Heroes play right there a second ago was absolutely great. great. I mean, under control, gets penetration, chin on the rim. So the defense reacts to him. And what does he do? He makes the right decision. And he did exactly what you said. Don't get sped up. So he held on to the ball. And instead of, you know, because it felt like, Seth, I knew what you were saying. It felt like he was going to jack up a three because it was my turn to shoot a three. But no, he took his time. It was just a great play. I'll tell you, this guy right here on the free throw line, he is really good. Got it. Really good. I mean, under controls, made shots, been unselfish in transition. Let me ask you, Seth, who hasn't been running? Really? You're right. That's a great point. Who hasn't been really running? A couple good of point. broadcasters. I'm not going to name names. But we got a great play-by-play -play guy. I thought he's been unbelievable because he's put up with those two broadcasters. <laughs> Actually, you know. Hazard pay should be part of it. He's squared up. Besides the room key and, and the handcuffs, he's been pretty well behaved. I tell you what, the biggest <laughs> upset of the week is that Dan Dockage has turned this tennis, uh, this Kentucky fan base oh. into actually liking him. Love me. The chosen one. Well, the people that are here. Yeah. This shows you. Well, look, Kentucky fans it. like me, but Kentucky media, I mean, who cares about those clowns? They're just making friends. I was uh, I was on a radio show the other day. They said, Tom, you work with Dan Dockage on this uh, guy's Kentucky Sports Radio. I go, yeah. They go, what's his problem? Why can't he help himself? Well, he, he can't help himself, but you know, he's he's kind of he's kind of lovable once you get to know. Him. Right, that's what I keep telling people. I mean, that's, he's kind of lovable. I'm I the mean, kind of guy you want to punch, and then you want to have a beer with. <laughs> Probably <laughs> happened multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> but you know, then you always might get punched back. But I'm just saying, that's the way. That's oh, first Higgins. time they got sped up, like right there. Just make a good play, take one more dribble, and let Quadi get in the play. Right. Tell you one what, more though, dribble. Hagens does enough defensively that you will have the occasional offensive lap and you'll live with a technical foul on B Max. I don't John think there's any debate who is uh, shooting this free throw. Nick Richards, seven of eight. My man hasn't missed one right I here. Know. Kyle Mason has to be the, <laughs> is Kyle Mason the all time leading free throw percentage shooter in Kentucky history? Yes. He is, right? Yes. You, you know that, right? My man right here might be coming after him. Kyle Mason, he was good, man. Kyle Mason was a great, not good, great tennis player. Oh, big time tennis big player. Big time. Played for his father, Peru, Indiana. Originally went to Purdue, transferred to Kentucky. One of the all-time nicest guys ever. Ever. What kind of season could this be for Tyler Hero? Because if he if he has a success that he's capable of on the floor, by the end of the season, he could be one of the most popular players in Kentucky history. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, out. if Time they out. win a national championship. Time out. Time out. Yeah, he, he would be decorated and loved. C Kentucky Jeez. has a tad bit of a history. I mean, let's not. Who's the most, beloved, who's on the most beloved player in Kentucky history? Who would you say? Frank Ramsey just passed away, and he certainly was one of them. Ralph Beard, 
Dan Issel. Dan Issel, that would be. I think right Jamal up. Mashburn I, I, is I up think, there. I think Goose Gibbons would be up there. Goose Gibbons is my all-time guy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he would be up there. Kyle Macy, in terms of loved, he would for sure be up there. You guys haven't mentioned Rex yet. Rex Chapman. Got to mention Rex. How come Jeff Shepard isn't on that list? He won a national champion as the most outstanding player. And people don't mention him. Is it the NBA thing? Didn't play well in the NBA or didn't play in the NBA? Jeff Shepard's an all-time great Kentucky player. I think that team, what, what were they called? The Untouchables? Well, there was John Pelfrey and the Unforgettables. Unforgettables? No, they didn't win a championship. No, but, they they, got, they they got but that team, wait a second. That, they, uh, forget, uh, let me tell you something. That team Jeez, right there. Something. Okay, yeah, let me tell you something. That team right there changed Kentucky basketball back okay. to who they were. All right, you but why that? isn't Jeff Shepard more beloved? He was the outstanding player on the national championship team. How? Why are you asking me? I think that's a question for the folks in the bar today. I know. That's I mean, why I'm asking because I'm active on Twitter. Your peoples are surrounding you right now. You need to ask them that question later. Well, I don't want you to mistake <laughs> most accomplished for most beloved, right? I mean, I can't, that's what I'm talking about. He could be he could be a folk hero by the end of the season. He could join my those hero? beloved players. No, I agree yeah. with that. What about Anthony Davis? Well, do you have to stick around longer well, than that to I be mean, beloved? I don't know. You just told me in seven months, if they win national championship, Tyler Hero is going to be one of the most is beloved players. Tyler Hero team. might end up being the fifth best player on this team. And you're not saying that as a slight. You're just no, saying this is a team no. that's loaded with talent. Absolutely. I mean, you've got a couple guards. Quad A Green's pretty good. Reed Travis is going to be pretty good. We've already seen what uh, the Johnson kid could do. I mean, he's not a lock to be the guy by any stretch. How about if I said untouchables? That's going to go to the movies. <laughs> That was close, though. My mind was not working. His, uh, I Nick was Richards. too interested in what Diane was going to say next. It's the so first time anyone's ever said that. <laughs> There's that little yeah, set that right there. That little, I was again. Yeah. Nick Richards' performance here this week changed expectations for him going into the season. He's competing at a high level. He's been really active. Look, throw him out of the way. There you go, He Nick. did, too. Just throw him out of the way. <laughs> Nick's been watching my guy Zeus Hernandez on our oh, on our team throw some people out of the way. In the You've done a good job cabin. with Zeus, I have to admit. I we, love have not, Zeus. we have not had any major incidents. No, yet. it's two crazy Playoffs. people hanging out together. Playoffs. Oh, misdirection with three the screen away. Nice. Cheer a Peach with his first three. Here's an interesting situation. Hero has the ability to get him in offense. Richards is staring dudes down. And we got another yeah, tackle. Yeah, they should. I think he went. And not on Richards. That's not on Richards. That's on seven. That's on Azcerich. Luca Azcerich, Austrian. Played three years in France. His dad, a pro coach, a former player, current head coach of the team in the French B League. Sturridge comes over. Now watch. Came the down with his hands. Right now, here's a technical. He yells at him, says something, then there's some bumping, and Sturridge comes back at him. I think Richards had the correct pronunciation of Sturridge right there after the push up. Half of it. Half. Half that matters. The sad thing is that Sturridge was in great position. Why do you come down with your hands? Just put him right in your chest. Come down with your hands. It's a foul. I mean, that's a foul in America. It's a foul in Serbia. It's a foul in France or Austria. I mean, don't put your hands on the guy. Don't come down with your hands. It's not a foul. Is that a double technical? Is he, you know, free throws well, a shot. Looked, he looked at both of them, and he pointed at both of them, so I'm sure he did give him a double technical. Yeah, double it was. Technical. What do you think of that call, Dan? I think it was good. Well, I do. I, I mean, I'll tell you what, because Richards went at him, and then the guy came back, and if you're going to call a technical, get them both. And there wasn't anything even that warranted a technical, but we got college reps, so we got to be dramatic. Well, listen, the most important role that the SEC crew is playing tonight, officiating in this game, is keeping it clean. Uh, you're exactly right. I mean, they're, they're the referee in a boxing match here. Just surprised we haven't gone to the monitor 15 times. There's no monitor to go to over there. Oh, that's explains it. <laughs> well, maybe we're starting a trend. I wouldn't mind. Oh, me neither. You kidding me? Get rid of replay and get rid of going to the monitor, and you got one happy guy. Here's your guy. 
Fun dip, Fundich working on Travis. Oh, oh, oh. Gosh. Nick Richards caught that one with his chin. I just like the little how's your father up and under right here. Watch the little scoop underneath the arm. Richards spiked the two hand, but creative anyway. Funchich. You've said his name 16 different ways. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. Funcich, is that 17? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes a foul. You know, it's interesting. This BMAX team came to basically punch Kentucky in the face. And I think right now, with their quickness, with their length, with the plays they've made, the counter punch has been pretty good. Dude, I've been saying that for two hours. It's been for two I, hours. I mean, I look, don't listen to you. They came out to hit him, and Kentucky hit back. And truthfully, I said at the end of the first half, the, their heart has been taken, I think, by BMAX. Uh, BMAX, uh, BMAX has had their heart taken by Kentucky. I think right now it's the length, the quickness, and the I think the pace. it's the physical play. I think Kentucky's been out physical. They haven't been cheap shot. They've just been tough. Right there. Look at my man. Funditch. Funditch. <laughs> 18th way. Who's he talking to right there? Who was he talking to right there? He's whatever that the is. Fish. Whatever that is. He fouls also. We're going to have that for dinner later. <laughs> Make an appetizer, 71-48, big blue. In front of Mega B-Max here, game three of their Bahamas tour. Game four coming your way tomorrow. P.J. Washington's been playing above the rim all night. P.J. Washington, terrific. He's run the floor. He's finished around the basket with either hand. He's punched it on some people, poster style. Thank you very much. Sports Center top ten. And I think in a high post. He's going to be hard to contain because he showed the ability to finish. I know. Go ahead. I told you that. I've been saying I've that for been three saying days. That. Unbelievable. <laughs> Let me tell you. I've been saying it for three Let days. Let me tell you something. You're just catching on to stuff. I'm huh? good. Good. That's why He's, I beat you by I, 28. I, I've had your I've had your headset on mute. <laughs> Can I borrow that headset for after the game? <laughs> I'm big after the game. Oh, you got your, uh, you got your people. You got your people to conference. take care of. Oh, yeah, yeah, first team all league. First team all crap state. DJ Washington at the free throw line. Got another one coming his way. That has been the third time there's been confusion yes. on the free throw situation here. Hey, Seth, let me ask you about this. What What do you think John Calipari expected from? the opposition throughout this tournament, and what it would there be to gain if they got a stiffer test? Well, I, talking to John before, he was concerned about this game to the point where he was thinking of coaching it because he didn't want any of his assistants to potentially take a hit. Uh, here's, here's to me, I think he wish he got a, a stiffer challenge because one of the things about this trip is he wants to now be able to have his team's attention. Maybe these young guys, and I don't think so, but maybe these young guys, because of the way they played, because of their success, he hasn't had that had that moment where he can really go get their attention now. John Jeez. has that ability, but I think sometimes getting punched in the face and not responding when you come back before the season starts is a good thing. He has plenty of ways to catch their attention. What? In practice. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's one of them. And then you think they played really well tonight. They've showed improvement every single game, yes. correct? Yes. Now when you get back, say they continue to play well. You obviously show the positives. They have not worked on their defense at all, yet they've been pretty alert. Young team, how do you think they handle the success, which they which is a challenge at times, don't you agree? Yeah, I suppose. I mean I I I I, I think that you go to Kentucky, you and Cal Perry, you know, it's not his first rodeo. I mean, he understands how to make sure a team continues to play. And you got a long time before you play Duke. And, you know, let's be honest. Everybody and their mother at Kentucky is going to be pointing to Duke, and this is going to be long forgotten by the time that happens. So if they're not ready, they're going to get smacked early. Their schedule is unbelievable, yeah. by the way. As it was last year, Duke, as it always Louisville, is. I mean, I mean, you look, they ha they have no rocking, very few rocking trips. See, I'm one of those, along with Dick Vitale, that says they should play Indiana. But the truth of the matter is, 
it, it'd be a great game for college basketball because it's a good rivalry. But Kentucky's beyond that right now. They play so many good teams that Indiana would just, quite frankly, be another named team. He's making more friends. No, I'm just saying that's how I look at it. I mean, that's exactly how I look. I've been one of those by telling I, I they should play. And, but they play enough good ones that what are you going to do? You can't play everybody. Look at this. Their schedule every single year, and you got to give them credit, they, they play people. And, they, and, yeah. and the games aren't games when they play, let's face it. They're events. So you know, he talks about being the biggest game on everyone's schedule, but he plays big games in in the conference because they are the biggest game on everyone's schedule, and then they play big games at a conference. Have you seen Keldon Johnson's shoes? Yeah, he's got some cartoon cast. He's got the Tasmanian Devil. Well, you know. That's kind of how he plays defense, isn't it? Dan, you look good in those. I look good in anything, but, yeah. but as those, long as the dust is in place. Right? Those are those are fancy. You got to get a pair of them. I'm good. I got more shoes than I got sense. I mean, the stuff that's, they gave us here is very positive. <laughs> <laughs> Spitting truth, Dan Dockage. More shoes than sense. By I do the way, he has a pair and a half of shoes. <laughs> Look at PJ Washington. How good has he been, kids? My goodness, PJ Washington on both ends, playing smart, being in the right position, good timing. You said it. Well, we've said it for three days. That kid has really worked on his body. Man, man, he knows how to play. His dad's a coach. Got his pinky taped up, had off-season surgery. Dad played at East Tennessee State and coached him at Findlay. Rich basketball tradition at East Tennessee State. Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings. I think Steve Forbes is doing an absolutely terrific job there. Had him in the SoCon title game last year. Really good coach. Quickly knocks a couple down. Here's quite a green again. As you watch, you can tell by watching these kids that they really like each other. Yes. You can watch I them mean, on the sideline of, of fantasy camp games. And you can tell they like, I was watching your game, and you had Quad A Green, and I forget who else. Hero was on the other end. Man, they're going back and forth at each other. We had a shot at that one. <laughs> the game. <laughs> <laughs> who drafted your team? I had the commissioner. That's a charge. How many guys are taking charge as an exhibition game? I have a rule on my fantasy team. True story. Take a charge, I buy you a beer. I had two guys, 40 years old, take charges on people. Just for the beer? I don't know, but, that, but apparently there's something in the water in Kentucky where we're taking charges because it's been – these guys are playing great defense and protecting the rim. Quite a green. You said it from jump, man. He's been really good. So you have been paying attention. I pay attention. <laughs> Dan, what's the nicest thing a Kentucky fan has said to you this weekend? I've got, I mean, true story. We're belaboring it, but we I, don't want to. People fake have been unbelievably nice, and actually, I walked in before the game, and the people sitting outside gave me a standing o. They've been unbelievably nice to me. They're basketball fans, like. You know, clowns on Twitter, guys in the media, who cares? These guys are basketball fans and the real Kentucky fans. They know, get in there, I love this kid. Love him. I'm telling you, I keep saying it, Nick Ward, Nick Richards, two most improved players in the country this year. My opinion, it's early, obviously. In fact, it hasn't even started. May not have started, but Kentucky already the preseason favorite to win the national championship, according to the guys out in the desert. We just started working with Brent. <laughs> <laughs> just stating the facts. <laughs> but would you have him as the favorite? I mean, obviously Duke would be in that conversation. Sure. Who Kansas, else is in Kansas could be very good. I think Gonzaga, Gonzaga, Gonzaga yeah, is loaded. They're going to be great. They got dudes back. They got big shot Norvell, man. That kid came in as a freshman, Zach Norvell, and was lights out in the tournament. Really they were getting... Burrow? They were getting ready to get beat in the first round of the tournament by, I believe it was Boise State. No, it wasn't Boise. No, it wasn't Boise. Who was that? And he just lifted up and hit three to tie it, and he hit an overtime, and then he beat Ohio State with three late threes. That kid, Hashimura's great. Perkins really good. Killian Tilly, very, very Killian good. Killian Tilly really good. But, man, I'll tell you what, give me some Zach Norville. Great pass. 
Who do you like? If you, number one team in the country, Seth. I, right now, I would have had, I would have had Gonzaga, from because of the number Kentucky? of guys that they have returning that are known entities that have won at a fairly high level. But I don't want to hear about the conference and all that jazz. Uh, Kentucky's in my top five. I mean, I haven't done a top five yet, but Kentucky would be in my top five. Kansas would be in my top five. Duke, I would say, would be my top five. I, I'm not sure they can shoot the ball. I mean, you know, Zion Williamson, big body, physical, explosive. You know, we talk about how great his feet are. And, you know, Barrett's really good and, and athletic, and, and Reddish uh, is, is extremely good. Where would you have Villanova? Villanova's, to me, a, a little bit of a question mark right now. I mean, they lost a lot of pieces. With Dante leaving, uh, their culture is so good, but, I mean, they've got some pieces. Booth is back, which is important. they got Pascal back, which is important. I'll tell you what, the SEC's got a bunch of teams that could potentially make the final four. Not a bunch, but that at, at Bill. Tennessee can. Absolutely. Tennessee we surely can. Yeah. I'm interested to see, like, the emerging, what I call the emerging teams. And Mississippi State's going to be good. Do you Bandy's think? going to be do, good. Do you think the kid leaving, Heron leaving, Auburn hurts? No, I actually think it helps. Do you? I do. I, I, Auburn is, they, you know, they're, they're going to have to wait for Kerfoy to come in. He's going to sit nine games. If Austin Wiley gives him a big body up front. But uh, Auburn is very good, and they play really hard. And I, I, I do think they're going to miss Murray a little bit more than people are yeah. I would say good luck winning there because they're going to be sold out for the fifth consecutive season. Well, they're going to play Kentucky twice, right? Kentucky's non-conference schedule. There's your guy. Footage. There's your guy. Close. Close enough. 20. Pals. Pronunciations. Yes. Good pass. How important is it for PJ Washington from an NBA perspective to hit four of those? You in Greensburg had Gonzaga beat in Boise. Well, if this is gonna happen, then I'm telling you, Kentucky's in for one of those absolute dream seasons. If PJ Washington or Reed Travis is gonna develop a three-point shot. It's over. Not this game. Maybe college basketball. Those two develop a three-point shot. Oh, boy. There's your ride. We'll chat with Cal Perry right after this. Rolling. Seven and a half to go here in the third exhibition game. Tom Hart, Seth Greenberg, Dan Dockett's joined by John Calipari and some of his closest friends up there with the commish. Cal, what do you think of today's performance thus far? I think they're really playing with great energy. Um, we got a high motor team and uh, no one's trying to trick anybody. They're just competing. And, you know, you go, you know, the guards that are in, the big guys that are in, it's just, that's how we want to play basketball. Just high motor, great movement. They're playing unselfish. Um, it is really, uh, it's fun to watch from up here. John. You Yesterday, you watched this team play. You were concerned oh. about their physicality, their toughness, how aggressive they were. Uh, you thought they were, they were going to punch your team in the face. How do you think your guys have responded to the physicality of the game? Uh, no, they've been great. I thought we took it at them. You know, I thought we took it at them, and, and I was surprised. Um, and from the start of the game, we were all over them. Um, Tony and Kenny and Joel and Robes are doing a great job. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about doing this all season. Maybe I should sit up here and, you know, I could say I got anxiety or whatever I want to say and just watch them play. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, in, I'm, it, I'm doing practices and walkthroughs and let somebody else coach the game. Well, speaking of coaching, uh, this exhibition uh, week also coincides with the fantasy experience the benefit your foundation let me ask you Cal whose fantasy is to be coached by Dan Dockich oh geez <laughs> that was my son just threw the ball away when he had a shot I didn't listen to one word you said I Tom you. or Dan whoever was talking you watch the game differently because when Brad's I on the floor am, I, he should have shot the ball now I'm going to hear it from my wife why don't you let him shoot it I'm like Ellen he had a wide open shot shoot the ball so what were you guys talking well, about? I, wanted, I wasn't listening. We were talking about the fantasy experience, and I was wondering whose fantasy is it to be coached by Dan Dockage? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, he's doing a great job. 
Seth is doing his normal. His team's 0-3. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> and, and I got Dan, one championship, and I just have a bad there. owner. Wow. And, and, and Dan, you know what I love? Dan is into it. Like, he's into it, coaching these guys and cheering them on and getting Ryan on Beers. them. And, you know, it's all over. Oh, he almost lost ah. his legs. Lost his legs. Look at Richards. Good, Nick. Hey, can you talk about Nick Richards, John? I think he's oh, been fantastic. And, and uh, Dan, it was either you or Seth or somebody said to me last year when they watched him, he was looking at his feet all the time. That was me. And and my thing is, like, yo, he he right now, I said, even if it's not going great, this is not last year. He's more confident. He's more comfortable. And look. As a coach, you'd like to be the reason that, oh, you would like to be the reason that he has confidence, but they got to build their own confidence. And that's through demonstrated performance. That's through working in practice, spending extra time. We've been down here and we got guys in this gym, this gym at midnight and one o'clock in the morning shooting and playing. They love the game. Why wouldn't you love coaching these guys? And, and it's a bunch of them. And EJ Montgomery is, you know, with the back right now, he's going to be fine. But he's not even on this group right now. How about Quad A Green? I mean, he played out of his mind today. It's not just the fans that appreciate it, but you've got a lot of NBA scouts in the building and personnel watching your team just as they will for your combine coming up here in a couple of months. What does it mean to get them this type of exposure this time of year? Well, I'm happy for them because they're all performing well. But here, here's the thing too. We only had 10 days of practice and I barely worked on defense. Never did anything on defense. So they're doing this. We scrambled a little bit and did some basic stuff. But what are they chanting? Johnny David. Who? Oh, Johnny David. They're right. Can I chant <laughs> that too? Yes. Johnny needs to be in the game. If but only you had good. any power to put him in. John, yeah, we, what's your biggest surprise from the first three games? Um, you know, I was I was really happy with the guys playing for each other. I told them, don't play for the fans, don't play for TV, and I felt the first game we did. And then since then, I think guys are playing for each other. They're creating the extra pass. How about we've had 10 practices with a brand new team and they're not turning it over that much? I mean, you know, and, and this team is physical and playing. You're this guy to make be... a trip down to the bench and get Johnny David in. I mean, no, hold on. Let me let me yell to him. Let him in. <laughs> they heard it. Hey, you know, it's great. They don't listen to me. There's oh. Johnny David. There. Now, Seth, did you talk about Joey David? I recruited Joey David to pick. Played for me. He's a big time physical therapist in Pittsburgh. He was a big time jump shooter. His other son was my manager at Virginia Tech. And you got Johnny playing for the Cats. And that and and I'll tell you what. Jo Johnny is a great kid. He's gonna graduate. You know, he's uh taking his GREs. He's he's just he's a good kid, and he's a terrific player and a terrific teammate. Coach, I want to ask you about the fan base because this turnout is incredible. And one of the things we were talking about earlier is you have such a wide variety of fans. You got the Fortune 500 guys who wear the Blue Delta jeans, and you got the other folks who say for four years to come here out here wearing Wranglers. What does it mean to have this fan base come here and get this access to your teams and players and create memories? Well, let me let me. We opened up the practice, and probably 800 showed up. We took pictures, signed autographs. I'm going to guess 85% of these people don't have tickets to Rupp Arena. And that's why we were going to do a, a raffle to give them seats on the floor, feet on the wood against uh, Tennessee. And so we're, we're, you know, you want to tell them you appreciate who they are and how they support this team. And, and it doesn't, it's not always just having money. It's the kind of support, you know, that these people give. You look at this. I mean, this place is packed. And they're all over this. And, and you know, I, the greatest thing for these people, every one of these people have, have touched these players. 
They've gotten pictures, signed autographs. And, and the same with uh, Ellen and I. They see us around, we're, we're talking. It's a chance for them to be up close with all of us and be down here. And I'm telling you, many of these people don't have tickets to Rupp Arena. The memories will be will be special because of that access forever. Their lifetime memories made by these fans. It would be even more special if this team could win another Kentucky National Championship. I know the season hasn't even started. You've practiced for 10 days. But what do you need to do to get to that point? What does this team need? Uh, we're not even. We're, we, we haven't even beat. Well, I, I can say we've started to climb. And what we were trying to do here is bring a team together to make them a close-knit group, which they've become. Um, the 10 days of practice was to give them some organization offensively, get them to play dribble drive, attack, run downhill. Um, and I thought this was a good shooting team. And I said, this should be a team that can score points. And, and again, pressure both ends. We're coming at you on defense, and we're not taking crazy chances. You know I don't coach that way. And then doing the same offensively. Pressuring, you know, trying to keep the game at a high pace. Now, when this thing's over, you got another game uh, tomorrow. What happens before school starts? And then when you get them back on campus, because you've had these 10 days, like kind of what would be your game plan moving forward? Yeah, well, what we'll do when they get back in September, we won't do any team basketball probably for two or three weeks, maybe longer, because we've done it now but we'll do individual work. And when I start working on team, a lot of it's gonna be defense. And the reason I don't work on defense, and normally I don't work on September, I don't defense, is because you want them to have fun. The season is too long. Who likes to play defense? And, and whether it was Dan or Seth or me, or, we never guarded anybody. And so why would we wanna have them having to guard the whole time? You know, I want them to have fun playing and learn about each other. And then just, we got to get them to talk more. But that's not going to happen until probably January. Hey, uh, by the way, Dawkins said he shut down Jordan. He takes offense to that. A little uh, offended by that, but all right. <laughs> He'll show you the picture if, you, if you'd like. There's, there's no video, doubt, video there, in my pocket. There, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. Johnny David with the rebound. They're cheering Johnny David. we got to get Johnny a shot. Come on, man. Get Johnny a shot. Oh, come on, Emmanuel. Coach. I, I got Jerry happy saying we got to get Brad a shot. <laughs> hey, 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 just wife, make sure Jerry happy doesn't right draft now. anyone again. <laughs> Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Awesome thanks, experience this week. Right. Three and a half to go on this one. Another one coming your way tomorrow. Cats thanks. rolling. Bye-bye. John Calipari's squad in control. We're back in the Atlantis right at this. And oh, there geez. he is. Oh, boy. Now he's going to want to check from ESPN. <laughs> And this is uh, Coach Calcam. Let's get that trending on Twitter. He's got his eye on Kenny Payne, who, by the way, I'm sure will say, listen, 21-point win over a professional team, not bad. The problem is when you're on Calcam, you need Dramamine. <laughs> I've got motion sickness. Yeah, that was the last Bahamas tour. Cal rocking the cargo shorts and running camera, being <laughs> loose and showing his personality. Why are people so down on cargo shorts? You're big on cargo shorts. No, I don't have any, but people are down on them. I, shorts and cargo shorts, nothing wrong with those. Get in there, Brad. Bradley! I think that that's a perfect example. Like, the perception of Cal, like, he's going to coach his guys hard. He's not afraid to coach them. Uh, he is kind of the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey of college basketball. He, he sees such a big picture, and he's so progressive. But he's so accessible. You see him walking around this place. He talks and takes pictures with everyone. He has time for everyone. Uh, he hardly ever says no. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, people don't understand. He really genuinely cares about the Commonwealth, the players, the community, and obviously the university. You agree with tell, that? You, tell you the difference. I was here. They were playing. Louisville was here playing a different event. Rick Pitino walked through, didn't talk to anybody, had security around him like he was a big deal. Calipari just walked through with his wife, shook hands, talked to everybody. It was unbelievable, the difference. One guy was like Gandhi. The other guy was like 
Oh, don't say. Can it. I ask you something? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta ask. How this many question. more Christmas cards did you I just get from Kentucky? I, when is the statue going up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, it struck me. I mean, Patino's walking through with his head down, and Cal Perry's shaking hands. So, who, I, let's go a little bit deeper. Who would you compare Patino to then? Don't go there. Bob Knight. Wait a sec. Don't go there. That was yeah, yeah. It could have been a lot worse, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> could have been a lot worse. <laughs> Rack Calipari trying to get free. This is going up. This is going Got up. Got to. That's deep. He will hear about that at tomorrow's game. Well, there was no doubt that thing was going up. And but really, your point about Calipari, he is so different than what people think. He... You know, let, let, let's be honest, Seth. I'm not a friend of John Calipari. I didn't, I didn't know him. I didn't go to all those five-star legendary stories. I went to five-star, and Garf told me I'll never play at Indiana because I had to go home and have surgery. So five-star this, five-star that. But, now, but, wait, wait, you but, don't have to but kill five-star. I'm not killing five anybody. I'm not killing anybody. But what I'm saying is people have this impression of Calipari, and I had an impression. I did. I'm not going to lie. I had an impression. I didn't know him. But I've gotten to know him a little bit. He'll text me. I'll text him. I'll do games. And he is just a genuinely nice guy that, as long as you're honest about his program, isn't going to have any kind of problem with you. He's told me that. Like, look, you're honest. You don't have an agenda. So, to me, it's been an eye-opening experience getting to know him from what I thought he was. i tell you what, he's also a, a, a brilliant businessman. I mean, brilliant. to put together this thing every four years. I remember talking to him back in the day. We're talking about taking his UMass team you know, when they could play every four years overseas and taking them to Europe, and he swung a deal to get them to take the Concord over. Because why wouldn't you take the Concord? Just do it, get over there faster, play more. And now, putting this together, nothing happens in his world without immense planning. Now, he, every detail, he's a big picture guy. He, he, you know, to me, he's probably, he's a trendsetter. When it comes, he thinks so far out the, out the box. I, I, I wanted to ask him about his August basketball. He thinks teams should play, be able to play in a tournament in August. He said August is kind of a dead month. It's before really f football is rocking and rolling. After the NBA Summer League, you see the exposure that the TBT was able to get, the numbers he was able to produce. He thinks allowing of putting together some type of tournament, different regions, in the summer would be a great way to promote the college basketball game. This dude is fast. Hagans who reclassified. He had originally committed to Mark Fox at Georgia. Touch pass for a three. Chara Peach has his second triple. You know, it's funny. Before this game, the general manager of uh, BMAX said this was going to be one of the biggest games in their team's history. Mishko Radnadovic. I mean, think about that. Probably didn't end the way he expected it. But this isn't your typical Adriatic lead, League opponent, that's for sure. Travis trying to beat the shot clock. How would you, what would you compare this team to? What's your gut feel? What level? Mac? Bigger than Mac. Yeah, they bigger. got NBA. I mean, Mac doesn't have front court guys like this. Mm, yeah, I don't know, Seth. I mean, I. I wanted to like him a lot more than I did. Um, and I know they got NBA guys and all the NBA, NBA guys that they've had, so there's a good history here. I'd say uh, oh, a right, really man, good what a, what a great defensive play that was. How about the left-handed dribble? What a great defensive play. We won't have time to see that one again, but how alert and active. You're right, the ball finds it. You know what he's saying right now? What's up, Ryan? Yeah, let me tell you something. You pay attention, you learn something. <laughs> Kentucky hangs 100 on the team from Serbia tomorrow, 4 o'clock, against Team Toronto, which includes Dwayne Notice, a former Gamecock who took Frank Martin's squad to the Final Four. Would he get a shot off at the buzzer? Oh, the place would have exploded. <laughs> For him, two rebounds. Great kick, John Davis. Suffocating defense early in this thing for Kentucky. Put the ball on their side, and they answered every punch thrown by Serbia. 